Hey everyone, I'm sure most of y'all have been following the happenings that's going on in Oregon with this, quote, standoff and this call for the militia. Well, I personally see this as a bit bad idea to begin with. The Hammonds did not ask the Bundys to come and the Bundys showed up and then all these other people showed up and then looks like there may even be some provocateurs involved. But what caught my interest was the word that has been used since the beginning of all this, and it's the term militia. And, you know, that's not a word that is very commonly used today. That's a very interesting word. And I got to thinking about, well, if I recall, each state has their own militia. And what are the repercussions, say, I mean, Bundy's calling for, quote, you know, more people to come. It's being termed as militia. Uh, so they're, they're stamping it and acting like militia is coming in from other states. And I just got to wondering about who's in charge of the militia. And I always, from my memory, it, it was like the governor was in charge of the militia for each state. Well, here I found a link at www.heritage.org, and I'll post the link in the description box. But it's interesting because according to this article, it says that the president can, is the one that calls up the militia, and the president is the one that controls the militia. It's very interesting read, and I just wanted to kind of point this out because it kind of goes through, and, and there's been like this like power struggle between the governors versus the president through the years, you know, different presidents, and uh, but it, it looks like it was decided, you know, during the founding, it's in the Constitution, about who is ultimately in charge of the militia. And it appears that it was granted to the president the authority to call forth the militia when the nation was invaded in imminent danger of invasion or when faced with combinations against the nation. The key provision of that law was that whenever it may be necessary, in the judgment of the president to use the military force hereby directed to be called forth. Anyway, I just wanted to point this link out. You might want to go just kind of study it. For some reason, this word militia has just stood in my head, and I just find it odd, you know, that that particular word has been used to label... Uh, these, these quote, protesters, the Bundys and their group over there, and I just, you know, I don't know why, but I just find this of interest. I've been wondering why we haven't heard anything from either of, you know, the governors, you know, like the governor of Oregon or even uh, anything from the governor of Nevada. You know, they're, they're classifying the Bundys, and they come from Nevada, and they're saying that they're militia. So they basically, a Nevada-based militia has entered Oregon and is calling for more militia to come in. Uh, that kind of thing. Uh, you know, the way it's been stamped and branded. Just something I wanted to point out as we continue to watch what unfolds there. I have bad feelings about this situation. Anyway, may... Our Heavenly Father, guide and protect, and may His will be done, it, it, whatever happens. I truly feel bad for the Hammonds. It looks like a, a pretty clear case that they have been horribly wronged for many years, but they're not the only ones. We can look up the word eminent domain, and this has been going on for years and years and years and years. If the government decides that they want a piece of land, 
All they have to say is in the best interest of the community or for the people. Uh, you know, we're taking it, and they're going to take it. That This is not something new. Just like our Lord tells us, you render unto Caesar that which is Caesar's, and render unto the Lord that which is the Lord's. Let's just uh, keep focus and understand, you know, times are times are picking up oppression and all the things that are going on god bless you all and may we all stay in our heavenly father's word and in prayer for discernment of these things that are happening that we all stay in his will and not become drunken with the drunkards and this is just to point out that in king david's time he had a militia made up of the 12 tribes and we learn this in first chronicles 27 and i'm not going to read this but i'm just going to point this out and on the side task it talks about how he proceeded to do these things this is this um it says, in this we have the account of the order of the civil service, what related simply to the political state of the king and kingdom. Twenty-four persons chosen out of David's worthies, each of whom had a second. They were placed over 24,000 men, all who served a month at a time in turn. And this was the whole of their service during the year after which they attended to their own affairs. Thus, the king had always on foot a regular force of 24,000 men who served without expense to him or the state and were not oppressed by the service, which took up only a twelfth part of their time, and by this plan he could at any time bring into the field twelve times of 24,000 or 288,000 fighting men, independently of the 12,000 officers, which made in the whole an effective force of 300,000 soldiers. And all these men were prepared, disciplined, and ready at a call, without the smallest expense to the state or the king. These were, properly speaking, the militia of the Israelitish kingdom. Isn't this interesting? You know, I, I seem to recall in the Constitution that uh, the fears of having a, quote, standing army, you know, one that was being paid from the people, you know, that uh, King David had it going. And I believe our Constitution, I believe that our founding fathers also understood this. I mean, so many people do not believe that our founding fathers followed the Bible. Well, I think this is another prime example of, uh, no, they did. They followed it quite closely in many ways. But anyway, I just wanted to point this out so people can go check this out for themselves. But I, I found this the other day and I thought, wow, okay. Now this makes sense. And it gives a, a deeper understanding about those standing armies that the people feared them standing armies and there's a reason.